it's Game Boy World and wah 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 wah. Peanuts. Charles Schultz's groundbreaking comic strip may well have been the single most important work of visual print media published in the 20th century. If not, it certainly stands as one of the most intimate and personal. Every day for 50 years, literally until the day he died, Schultz wrote and illustrated a tiny narrative for millions of readers around the world. Peanuts wasn't like the comic strips that had come before it. Despite focusing on the world from the perspective of children, the series avoided cliché and cutesiness. It wasn't cynical, precisely, but it certainly possessed a world weariness well beyond those children's years. And yet, Charlie Brown and the Van Pelt kids and Pigpen and Schroeder and all the rest weren't precious in a trite sitcom sense. Somehow, Peanuts walked a careful line between portraying children as adorable simpletons and treating them as diminutive adults. They were kids with the neuroses of grown-ups, reflecting the anxiety and ennui of the cultural revolution of the latter 20th century, but with a tool set appropriate to youngsters. Peanuts presented children not necessarily in a realistic manner, but definitely in an authentic one. They were by turns fragile and tremendously cruel, vulnerable one moment and heedless of others the next. Kids can be horrible little monsters, and Peanuts captured this tiny savagery with painful efficiency. The strip often eschewed punchlines in favor of something more akin to Japanese yonkoma, where the final panel often deflates the joke setup or creates a sense of being unfulfilled. Really, the closest thing Peanuts had to a spiritual predecessor in the American comics page was George Harriman's Crazy Cat, a full-page comic that invariably ended with Ignatz the Rat lobbing a brick at poor Crazy Cat's head. Replace the brick with a pointed barb or heartless remark, and stick around for the consequences of that missile's impact, and you have Peanuts. So how do you bring such a profound, influential, and above all melancholy comic strip to Game Boy? Do you make it into an adventure game, packed with regretful text? Do you create a sports game where you never win at baseball, or never manage to kick the football? Do you give fans a game about flying a kite while trying to avoid ravenous trees? Do you throw in a toy piano minigame, or an aerial shooting sequence featuring a sock with camel that strangely resembles a doghouse? Do you, in short, do anything that even remotely has to do with the spirit and substance of Peanuts? If you are Kimko Seika, the answer is no. Instead, you turn out a generic puzzle action game. And now we know why Charlie Brown's always so depressed. Snoopy's Magic Show has nothing whatsoever to do with Peanuts besides some sprites. You control Snoopy, and your goal in each level is to collect four woodstocks. That's it. That's as Peanuts as it gets. You'd think based on the title, the game might have something to do with 1981's It's Magic, Charlie Brown, in which Snoopy became a stage magician. That also is not the case. Here's a fun mental exercise. Imagine replacing the Snoopy and Woodstock sprites with, say, Master Splinter and Four Baby Ninja Turtles. Or maybe with a Quintet of Sailor Scouts, or Power Rangers, or the Goonies. You could slap any characters into this game that you wanted, and it would be just as faithful to those franchises as Snoopy's Magic Show, or Snoopy Magic Show as it says on the title screen, is to Peanuts. This is low-grade, superficial, licensed content. I guess it shouldn't be too surprising, the basic concept here isn't too terribly different from Kimko Seiko's first Game Boy title, The Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle. It's kind of action-y, kind of puzzly, and kind of generic-y. Still, Crazy Castle fared okay, despite the fact that Kimko literally swapped licenses and characters with every single sequel and localization of the game. Because Crazy Castle was a pretty solid puzzle platformer overall. Snoopy's Magic Show, despite having been designed and released as a Peanuts game in all territories, doesn't acquit itself nearly so well. At its most basic level, Snoopy's Magic Show plays more or less like a variant on Crazy Castle. Rather than taking the form of a side-scrolling platformer, though, it instead adopts a top-down perspective. But you're still dodging hazards while collecting items and navigating puzzle-like environments. It's much less entertaining than Crazy Castle, though. While some stages in Crazy Castle could be annoying and involve considerable randomness, the entirety of Snoopy's Magic Show falls victim to that flaw. The premise goes like this. You play as Snoopy, who has to navigate mazes in order to gather four of his little Woodstock-like bird friends. 
Meanwhile, you have to avoid an increasing number of hazards as the courses proceed. A bouncing ball, then two balls, then two balls, and Snoopy's scuzzy drifter of a brother, Spike. Making contact with any of these items causes Snoopy to lose a life, because of course a game called Snoopy's Magic Show should involve death. Though, honestly, the perpetual sense of failure and futility that hangs over the game is probably the one thing it got right about Peanuts. Snoopy moves pretty slowly, and the balls are very slightly faster than he is. More importantly though, they move by reflecting off the walls, usually at a 45 degree angle, so they tend to cover a lot of ground and force you to play with caution. Spike, on the other hand, moves with quick, staggering steps homing in on Snoopy directly. Where the design fails is in the predictability of the balls. Namely, they're not predictable at all. When they strike a wall, they bounce in a random direction rather than reflecting at the correct angle according to physics. This makes the game needlessly random and reduces much of the action to trial and error. You could be doing just fine until a ball makes an unlikely bounce and flies right into Snoopy's face, even if it should be impossible. The balls have a noticeable tendency to bounce to wherever is going to be most inconvenient and annoying for the player. That's not just frustration talking. The ball literally will alter its course in order to chase the player, so to speak. It'll carry them in a weird direction or even change its velocity on a whim in order to be annoying. I suppose the unorthodox behavior of the balls is why it's called a magic show, but this is exactly why everyone hates people who like to do magic tricks. The game consists of 120 puzzles, each of which consists of a single screen. Obstacles can include arrow floor tiles that force you to move in a particular direction, destructible blocks, timed blocks that rise and descend to create temporary obstructions, fixed blocks, and teleporter tiles. You can also collect a couple of special power-ups. There's a P icon that renders Snoopy invulnerable for about 3 seconds, and a clock that freezes the action momentarily. The P icon is definitely the best, since touching a hazard while invincible takes that item out of the action for the rest of the stage. A welcome reprieve. It's important to note that the fixed blocks sometimes aren't as fixed as they look. As in The Legend of Zelda, some of them can be pushed aside to clear paths or reveal hidden items. However, this too can feel irritatingly random. Because blocks can only be pushed in a single direction, you have no way to know which blocks can be moved in which directions until you've tried shoving them from all angles. Doing this under a tight timer while erratic balls try to home in on you really isn't all that fun and reduces many puzzles to a mundane trial and error routine. The transporter pads can be equally vexing. When two teleporter tiles are visible, you'll always jump from one to the other. But when there's only one on screen, you'll warp to an arbitrary tile within the stage. Which tile? Well, that you don't know until you try it. And I've lost count of how many lives I've lost in my first attempt at making these blind transporter jumps because they warped me directly into the path of a ball. Don't get me wrong, Snoopy's Magic Show isn't the worst puzzle game we've seen so far in Game Boy World. It falls in the middle somewhere, maybe the lower middle. But on a platform that's already so glutted with puzzlers, a game in this genre has to be something special in order to stand out. Dedelian Opus had that special magic, Snoopy's Magic Show, ironically, doesn't. With an unremarkable design and over-reliance on luck and randomness, and nothing whatsoever to do with the Peanuts series besides its sprite skins, Snoopy's Magic Show is a pretty crummy use of a wonderful license. Like Loop on the Third and Popeye before it, Snoopy's Magic Show really makes you appreciate modern licensed games. They may not always be great, but at least they demonstrate some awareness of the license they wield. That's more than you can say for Kemco's slapdash effort with Peanuts. <sighs> Good grief. For even more puzzle games to fill you with a Charlie Brown-like sense of ennui, keep watching Game Boy World, and please help fuel this angst by supporting the project. Next time, a surprisingly not weird game from Meldak. <laughs>